When massive stars reach the end of their lives, they explode in an event called a supernova. What remains is a collapsed core as dense as atomic nuclei with many fascinating properties that are not yet fully understood. As a massive star with a mass of between 10 and 29 solar masses reaches the end of its life, it uses up all of the fuel that powers the nuclear reactions within it. Without these nuclear reactions occurring, there is no more pressure from within the star to balance the strong gravitational forces compressing it. The star then begins to compress, and as it does, it explodes in a spectacular explosion called a supernova. Most of the star's matter gets ejected into space, and what remains is a collapsed core with an incredibly high density and very strong magnetic fields. Matter that is ejected, also called supernova remnant, often forms beautiful structures such as Crab Nebula, which is a remnant of a supernova that happened in the year 1054. Remaining collapsed cores are called neutron stars, named like that because it is believed that they are composed mainly of neutrons, like giant atomic nuclei. The density of neutron stars is so incredibly high that if our sun were compressed to the same density, it would have a radius of only 20 kilometers. Hence, neutron stars are the smallest and densest stars in existence. Because of their density, they have a very strong gravitational field. So strong that if you were to jump from a height of 1 meter above its surface, you would hit it in only 0.000001 seconds, with a velocity of over 2.8 million kilometers per hour. While the massive star is collapsing under its own weight, its radius decreases and therefore, due to conservation of angular momentum, its rotation rate increases, up to several hundred rotations per second. Some neutron stars, called pulsars, emit beams of electromagnetic radiation from their magnetic poles and because of their constant rotation we can detect that radiation in very precise intervals. So precise, in fact, that they are considered to be the most accurate clocks in the universe. Pulsars are generally defined by their periods, which change over time. These periods range from few seconds to few milliseconds. The first discovered pulsar was observed on November 28, 1967. And because of its pulsating nature with a period of 1.33 seconds, it was believed that no astrophysical or man-made object could be the source, and so it was named LGM-1, or Little Green Man. Quick fun fact. Image of radio pulses of this pulsar was used as an album cover for English band Joy Division and their debut album Unknown Pleasures, which you can see right now. Another interesting property of neutron stars are their magnetic fields, whose strength ranges from the 10 to the power of 4 to 10 to the power of 11 Tesla, which is 100 million to 1 quadrillion times stronger than Earth's magnetic field. The strongest magnetic fields are so extreme that they can polarize the vacuum around it, create particle-antiparticle pairs, and merge or split photons. These magnetic fields can be so strong that they can cause fractures of the crust causing starquakes that can be observed as extremely luminous millisecond hard gamma-ray bursts. One of such starquakes was observed on December 27, 2004 when a magnetar, a type of a neutron star, emitted large amounts of gamma-ray emissions. The magnetar released more energy in one-tenth of a second than the Sun releases in 150,000 years. A similar blast within 10 light-years of Earth would destroy the ozone layer and be similar in effect to a 12 kiloton nuclear blast at 7.5 kilometers.
Describing these magnetic fields is often a complicated procedure. The majority of models describing the magnetic field of a neutron star are based on the assumption that the magnetic field is a centered dipole. In these models, the dipole axis of the magnetic field is tilted with respect to the spin axis. It has been shown that rotating neutron stars cannot be surrounded by a vacuum. They are instead surrounded by plasma, with the exception of narrow spots called gaps. In these gaps, cascades of electron-positron pairs are produced, and some of them stream outward away from the neutron star and are responsible for radio, gamma ray and non-thermal X-ray emissions. The rest that stream inward hit the surface and heat it up, creating so-called hotspots that generate X-ray pulses. All of these emissions can be studied to estimate the masses, radii and magnetospheres of pulsars. One of the telescopes that are responsible for observing emissions from pulsars is Neutron Star Interior Composite Explorer, or just simply NICER. This telescope has been put to use in 2017 aboard the International Space Station, and almost immediately gave us groundbreaking results. Since 2005, researchers have extensively studied emissions from the pulsar PSR J0030 plus 0451, one of the nearest observed pulsars at a distance of only 329 parsecs away from the Earth. But only recently, when NICER took a look, has this pulsar gained popularity. The emissions that NICER observed span a wide range of frequencies most notably radio, x-ray and gamma-ray bands. The radio and gamma-ray pulses come in the form of peak components that can be used to estimate the configuration of the magnetic field of the pulsar. These estimates relied on the assumption that the pulsar's magnetic field has a dipole structure. However, none of the models could explain all of the features of the observed emissions. The most commonly used model describing the magnetic field of pulsars is the STS model, characterized by antipodally reflection symmetric circular hotspots that require a dipole magnetic field. This model was found to generate an X-ray signal that when combined with a background signal appears qualitatively similar to the real data. However, upon further examination of the STS model, it was shown that the spectrum generated by the hot regions far exceeds a spectral upper bound derived from earlier analysis. Moreover, the star must be both relatively massive and large to generate a signal that even resembles the observations. The other model, called STU, endows the hot regions with distinct parameters and relaxes the prior support for the geometric configuration of the hotspots. This model outperformed the STS model, but was deemed inferior to the other higher complexity models. However, both the STU and the higher complexity models require antipodal hotspots, but the evidence suggests that both hotspots are located on the same rotational hemispheres, separated by approximately 90 degrees. NASA did simulations of these hotspots, which you can see right now. We can also see that hotspots are not all circular, but some are crescent-shaped, which is in itself unusual. NASA also did a simulation of a possible structure of the magnetic field. We can see how complex it is in comparison to the standard dipole magnetic field. In conclusion, Recent modeling of observations of X-ray pulses generated by this pulsar indicate a strong preference for hot surface regions that are seemingly impossible by the standard models describing pulsars. The hotspots must have remarkably different shapes and must be located in the same rotational hemispheres. The existence of non-dipolar magnetic field configurations has a profound impact on pulsar science and will surely be a focus of the future studies.